way, in this tutorial, I'm going to just show you how to fix the sudo issue. Um, so the first step is to connect to our public DNS. And then we're simply going to SSH into it. Um, and I'm going to SSH into the server that's having the issue first. Um, just so I can demonstrate exactly what it is and um, how we can fix it. And then, of course, I did this wrong right here. I just have to go ahead and fix it by adding EC2 user at the beginning. Um, so you can see now I connected. When I type sudo, um, you can see that I have this error. Um, basically, it's because I was messing around with user permissions and changed it um, in the wrong spot. So it's a big no-no. Um, and um, Certainly, if you're watching this video, you, you learned the lesson as well. So um, the first step is to stop the instance. And you can see that uh, the SSH, SSH connection did stop. Now, um, the theory is to take this drive, then um, mount it somewhere else. So what we're going to have to do is detach the volume um, from the instance. And we're going to have to attach it to a new volume uh, pretty soon. So I did set up a, a volume before um, for this very thing. So because uh, that whole process is very long. But if you've created an instance before, um, that is a completely separate thing. So let's go ahead and we're gonna, we have this instance right here called testing. And um, we now have an available uh, volume right here for the it's called Brodsky. We're gonna set it equal to, or set it to our testing instance. Uh, and make sure you look at this. Um, it's like some nice notes. Um, now we're going to have to wait for it to, um, we're going to connect to it or hit the check to make sure it's the right thing on the instance. And um, we of course need to start up the instance, make sure everything's working right. Now it's going to take some time, so I did pause the video and I came back. Um, and I'm going to, of course, add the VPC. Um, by the way, this whole process does take a while. Um, I uh, cut up the video a bit to make sure everything is uh, very smooth and, and much faster, or else you'd be having an hour-long tutorial. So you can see that my instance is attached, which is perfect. Now let's go ahead and um, make sure that the instance, the, vol the block volumes are there. You can see that on a regular instance, it doesn't have it. Um, so now we have to go ahead and connect to our server or our instance and make sure we can mount it. So the first step is to uh, make sure sudo works on this machine, and it does, which is awesome. So we can be the root user. We do need to be the root user to be able to uh, um, get to the mount. So this right here shows all the available mounts. Now we have to just do some testing to make sure that we have this correct. Um, this function called fdisk is really nice. Um, it shows uh, all the uh, drives that are currently attached. You can see that I'm highlighting the one uh, that we want. And now uh, we simply have to mount it to the disk. So we're going to use the mount command. Um, so we have this. Um, now what um, I like to do is I like to create a directory, a new directory in our testing so it's, uh, it doesn't affect anything else. So uh, let's call it uh, like new mount. And we're simply going to check to make sure it's there. Uh, go, go to the root, make sure it's in there. You can see that we now have a new mount. All right, the next thing is to actually 
uh, mount the actual drive to that directory. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, now, it's kind of tricky to get this exactly right. So if you um, mess this up, put the wrong one, just make sure you check it and make sure you're in the right folder. So what I like to do is I like to go over to uh, var then www where I have all my websites. And you can see that this is definitely the, the drive because the other one will be blank. Um, and let's go ahead and look at the etc and you can see that sure enough uh, there is that file that or that directory um, that has the incorrect permissions and now we can go ahead and this is where it gets fun we actually get to change some permissions to something that uh, might have taken you hours before to do um, just to figure it out um, I know the first time I did this it was very difficult so then I do it again um, and you can see that the permissions did change. Awesome, and now we're, we're done with this uh, process. So um, the next step um, will be to um, de uh, detach the drive. So we have to stop our instance first, our testing instance. And let's go ahead and go to our volumes. Of course, this does take a while to stop, so uh, I, do, I do pause the video and then I come back. You can see that you can see that right now it's uh, completely stopped. And now what we want to do is we want to go to our volumes, and if you go to the um, one that's attached to it, we can now detach it. Now, when it's already stopped, the detaching process is really fast. All you have to do is really refresh. And when you refresh, you can see that now it's available. So now let's go ahead and attach it. We're going to attach it uh, straight to our um, original instance. Now the the device is a bit tricky, so um, a lot of times you can get it wrong the first time around, but that's okay. When when you attach it, it'll tell you which one is missing, uh, which one's necessary. So we'll uh, go ahead and attach it, and then we're going to start an instance and make sure it works and if it doesn't we'll go ahead and change that back to what it needs to be. So we're going to start this and sure enough the instance is wrong because we have the wrong uh, directory place for the root. We we'll just copy and paste this to the right place. Let's go back to volumes. Going to go over here and you're going to first detach it, and then we're going to reattach it in the right place. And let's just paste. And we're going to attach it. Attached works. Awesome. Now let's go over to our instance. We're going to now start up our instance. Of course, this does take a, a bit of time. So it's pending, and then we're going to go ahead and stop the video, come back. And uh, you can see that now it's running. We want to link to our VPC. We already have one set up. Awesome. Some security, group ID, etc. Uh, normal stuff. Now the uh, last thing would be our elastic IPs. And we just want to make sure we have the same IP that our DNS is set to. I'm using Cloudflare in this case. Um, and let's go ahead and publish it to the right IP address. Our IP is right. Our DNS is already pointing there. So now is about the time it should be working if everything's good. Let's go ahead and um, just make sure everything is in the right place. And then we're going to... Um, uh, we're going to have to go ahead and connect to it. Uh, the first thing we're going to have to do now is um, make sure everything starts up. And before we had an issue with starting up, we're starting up uh, like MySQL, starting up Apache, simply because sudo didn't work and it's you can't really start services like that 
uh, without root permissions. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get ourselves going. We have to connect to the server. Now, one of the uh, kind of tricky things on this is uh, since you're connecting to the same IP address before and um, things have changed a lot of times, sometimes you just need to clear out the information on, on your machine. So um, I'm going to show you how I do that in one second. So this isn't going to work. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go into Coda and I'm going to edit my um, my host file. Not my host file. Um, my known host file. So you can see that it actually gives me a an error saying that you need to edit your known host file. Awesome. So let's open up Coda. And I actually have another video on editing your host file if you want more information on this. Just uh, search it on brotsky.tv and you can get it. And I just like to delete the last few. It doesn't really matter. Um, and I hit save. And now let's go ahead and try this connection again. And look at that, it works. We have a new R, um, RSA key for fingerprint because we deleted the known host. And you can see that now sudo does seem to be working. This is exactly what sudo should do. Let's go ahead and sudo into the right user, into the SU user. And now let's get these processes working, or these services, and make sure that we're actually working. And let's do the same thing for MySQL. Cool. We have these working. We have pseudo working. Um, our troubles are over. Now let's go ahead and just test it. You can see this works, but this site doesn't use a database. So let's go ahead and load a site that does. That happens to be in the same instance. And although uh, it's a bit slow, um, it does work. And that completes this uh, tutorial.